UN aid convoys have set off for three besieged towns in Syria. One of those towns is Madaya, north of Damascus, where 40,000 people received their last food delivery in October. Well, with more on this story, I'm joined now by Gregory Barrow. He's a senior spokesman for the UN's World Food Programme. Uh, Mr Barrow, good to speak to you this afternoon. Uh, can you tell us exactly what kind of aid will you be delivering to those who are trapped in Madaya? In this first convoy, we're concentrating on food aid deliveries, uh, basic staples like rice and wheat flour, vegetable oil, but also canned goods so that people can uh, eat them immediately and goods that won't necessarily need cooking. And then within those uh, relief convoys, there'll also be more specialised food products that are designed to meet the special nutritional needs of people who are perhaps quite sickly because they haven't had access to food for a lengthy period of time uh, and, and mr barrow and mr barrow um will this be enough food for those people who are trapped this first convoy, uh, if it goes in, will provide food assistance for about 40,000 people for a month, which is what we estimate is needed uh, in, in terms of the next few weeks. But I think what we're saying to all sides in the conflict in Syria is that really it's not sufficient for us to get this one-off access to this town and other towns that are uh, facing sim similar situations across the country. We need free, unfettered and unhindered access to these towns and villages all the time. This is a basic humanitarian principle and this is something that we want to be very clear about uh, to all of those who control access to these areas. Well that's precisely the point isn't it Mr Barrett and will you be getting that uh, unlimited access to these towns? Um, the short answer is I don't know. Um, we estimate that uh, maybe up to 400,000 people across Syria at the moment are living uh, under siege, either under siege from government forces or from opposition forces. Uh, and this is unsatisfactory as far as we're concerned. Despite these challenges, we at the World Food Programme are managing to reach around 4 million people a month with food assistance, but it's not enough. And I think we need to send a very, very clear message uh, to all of those who control the checkpoints, the men with guns, that we as aid agencies need to be able to get through to ensure that this level of suffering doesn't continue. Now, this will be food aid. Just tell us exactly what kind of uh, food will be involved, because obviously there are people there that are starving and have been drinking, well, surviving on water. Yes, we've uh, heard uh, what we believe to be fairly credible reports over the past few days of uh, really quite extreme levels of suffering within Madaya. We need to get in now and see exactly uh, what the extent of this is. Um, if there are people who are, are, are needing some, of some kind of medical attention because of malnutrition, um, then there will be specialised food products that are taken in to address um, those uh, particular problems and uh, our colleagues working for the United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, um, are very familiar with this kind of work, de dealing particularly with severely malnourished children. So those, uh, those kinds of individuals who need that specialised kind of help will get it if we can get these convoys in. And what kind of food will you be prioritising? Initially, in this first phase, it's those specialised products that I've mentioned, but also more general staple food items for the population, uh, a population that has been deprived of basic food items like rice, like wheat flour, vegetable oil, salt and sugar. We'll be taking those kinds of supplies in. Even those limited supplies that have been available in Madaya, we're aware that prices have gone up astronomically uh, in recent months because of the siege. So we want to address those basic needs in this first convoy.